Right. This is Lionel Snell. If you're hearing this, it's because you turned on the developer commentary for my latest game, my <laughs> magnum opus really, called Walk. The scene you're looking at is a model of my childhood bedroom. This right here is where Super Weasel Kid was conceived. Take it in. That weasel was my favorite pet. I called him, yeah, you guessed it, Weasel Kid. One of my favorite games at that age was Cooking Granny. I thought Chef Bryce was the coolest. <laughs> well, you know how that. My original plan for Walk was to have it be an almost non-interactive experience. Just allow the player to explore and contemplate. 
I did some market research, though, and, well, that kind of game was falling out of vogue. Not much money in it. So I jammed in some real gameplay. I thought that since this is about my life as a developer, why not show the player what it's like to make a game? I mean, this is like a way dumbed down version of the stuff I do, but but to the average gamer it's a challenge. I remember when I first got the jumping code right and hooked it up to a keyboard button. Oh, that dopamine rush electrified my childhood brain. Irving came as part of the GameWorks package. I was a little hesitant about using an AI at first, but he became really helpful. It didn't take long to realize how much I depended on Irving. He assured me that it was easy for him to come up with enemies and non-player characters for me, so I let him do his job. Irving told me we couldn't get the original Super Weasel Kid for Walk. Something about losing the files. Kind of a shame, I guess. The success of Super Weasel Kid paralyzed me. I tried starting a few different games, but I kept comparing them to my big hit. What would people think if I put out something that was worse? That I had just gotten lucky the first time? That I'm a one-trick pony? Eventually I settled on making a sequel. Super Weasel Kid Radical Road. I'd been playing a lot of fighting games at that age, always loved those. I wanted to make one, but I wasn't quite as talented as I would become. So that's why I just had to add combat to Radical Road. I thought it was just... Exhilarating to beat the shit out of that Grunda. But the critics really came down on me for that part. It left me feeling like I had no idea what people wanted. Radical Road was met with mixed reviews, and it made me panic. I resolved to put away Super Weasel Kid forever and try something new. To top it off, my shrew died. Weasel Kid actually escaped, if you can believe it. I took him outside one time, and he slipped out of my hands and ran into my neighbor's rose garden. I searched for hours, but the garden was pretty big, and the thorns were painful. Mr. Shrewd was long dead at this point. 
Shrews just don't live that long. I'd get emails once in a while, people asking to make deals, wanting to capitalize on my IP. It had been a couple of years now since Radical Road, and one day I just said, fuck it, fine. I sold the franchise to the highest bidder. When I saw what they did with Super Weasel Kid, I felt a little part of myself die. But I was 18 years old and loaded. It was actually one of the best years of my life. The next scene is based on my foray into larger scale game development. The plan? Make a fighting game. Not everyone remembers, but I started- Okay, just- a Jump a little bit higher. You're almost there. Anyways, as I was saying, I don't get nearly enough credit for starting one of the most popular fighting game franchises in history. Ah, uh, it's a beauty, isn't it? I put my weasel bucks to use and bought this place with cash. Then I hired a team. I hired my childhood friend Carla to work at my new studio. She was halfway through a degree in computer science, but I offered her a huge salary. Hard to say no to that. Carla's first order of business was to tell me that I had designed too many male characters. I tried to tell her that Steambot Willie was genderless, but she insisted. So I created Chandrell while she worked on Sado. <laughs> that eye. <laughs> That's the kind of thing I'm talking about. Ever since Carla created Sado, I'd get these weird... Annoying bugs in my games, and I'm still getting them in walk. <laughs> Not exactly sure what Carla did while she was creating this, you know. She told me some mumbo-jumbo about pushing GameWorks to its limits. That 
character was eerie, to say the least. Look at that door. That's exactly what it looked like in real life. Solid teak, hand-carved, gold nameplate. I was hiring people who were twice my age. I had to make sure they understood who was in charge. I bought the rights for my favorite game character. That is, my favorite character I hadn't made myself. Integrating Bryce into Combat Arena was harder than I thought. I had a lot of help from Irving. Making Combat Arena gave me my first glimpse into the, well, to be frank, the stupidity and immaturity of gamers. Every damn day we got complaints about how this or that character was overpowered, underpowered, too boring. Ugh, I never wanted to work on a fighting game again. I have to admit though, coding the punches and kicks was everything I had hoped it would be. I'd sit in my office for hours just watching these characters go to town on each other. Sometimes they'd look like they could actually feel it.
Ugh, God, it was such a relief to ship that game. I hated it by the end. But since my fingers had touched it, it turned to gold. I still had my contract with Game Funa, so I sold the franchise for another boatload of cash. Now that my studio was bigger, richer, unstoppable, it was time to take on something huge. An epic fantasy adventure that only a studio like mine could accomplish. This is when I made Secrets of Legendaria. I put everything into that game. I hired the best programmers, the best designers. I burned through my fortune fast. But this game was going to be epic, goddammit. I paid the biggest gaming streamer to play it live, with hundreds of thousands watching. <laughs> yeah, you like that switch mechanic? Pretty cool, huh? Still got it.
The stream had been going alright with the odd hitch or two, but things took a terrible turn for the worst right near the end. <laughs> it was chaos. Secrets of Legendaria bombed. Carla had left bugs in there intentionally to sabotage me. It must have been that, because everything went wrong. And everyone saw it live. The game had no hope of recouping costs, so I took funds from the severance packages and ran. I couldn't even afford my apartment anymore. I moved south to find some cheaper real estate. Living in the desert was a miserable experience. I blasted the AC all day, but I was somehow always sweating. I started working on Waste World here. It was supposed to be my great comeback. I would wake up, sit in front of my computer, and just stare at the screen with my hands beside the keyboard. After about an hour of that, I'd blow off the rest of the day playing some online game. Sure, I'd sometimes accomplish something, but then I'd reward myself with some social media time and would wind up reading articles about myself. They weren't kind to me. I never finished Waste World. I wanted this area of walk to reflect that experience, so I left it half finished. That also saved me some development time. <sighs> I'm pretty sure half of those levels were unbeatable, but I just didn't care anymore. Oof. The heat of that godforsaken place. Most days, it kept me inside.
Somehow, the more I needed to finish that game, the more I avoided doing it. My parents would call every once in a while to ask how it was going, but I'd just lie. The final straw was those idiotic modders. They took my half-finished game and made a goddamn mockery of it! Aliens? In a post-apocalyptic Wild West? It made no sense. If I couldn't finish the game myself, I sure as hell wasn't going to let them do it for me. take on those modders really fired me up. It was just what I needed to bring those low lives to task. Those gormless basement dwellers were going to pay for ever attempt. <laughs> and that's how I programmed the blood particles. I think it really contributed to the visceral pleasure of Vicious Galaxy 2, making it the obvious standout in the series. My only gripe with the game was the designs of the main characters. I'm too old! But everyone wanted the same boring space marines from Vicious Galaxy 